Hello everyone. In this video, I will guide you through the process of creating a detailed step-by-step -step Laravel email application. As a seasoned developer, I understand the importance of email functionality in any web application, and in this tutorial, I will show you how to build a robust email application using the Laravel framework. With my expertise in Laravel and email functionality, I will provide you with a comprehensive guide on how to create and customize email templates, send and receive emails, and implement email verification. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced developer, this tutorial will help you master the art of Laravel email application development. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the exciting world of Laravel email application development together. Now I will briefly demo the functions that we will do today. First, to send email, we need to set up a configuration email. This email is a sender to other customer emails. I will enter an email that I have prepared. Next we switch to the mail template creation tab. Here I make it simple. The email will include title and content. In the customers tab, here I will add the email customers need to send mail. I will create two customers for the demo. With the send mail tab, here I use select two for selecting the customers I want to send. I will select the customers I want to send and press the send button. The email will be put in the queue and perform the send operation. Okay, we can see the mail delivery status like pending. Send, error when the email is sent. This is the whole feature we are going to implement in this video. I will guide step by step and in detail so that the audience can follow. In CMD, I will create a project with name example send email. I will use Taewin CDN for the project, I will paste it inside the head tag.
I will write the interface for the project with HTML and CSS. The layout of the project will have five tabs. Corresponding to each tab, we will have content. Attention at every href. I will stick with content.
in the Send Email tab. I will use Input with Select2 for selecting multiple customers. I will add select to library path and style some CSS for input select.
Now I will write a script for clicking tabs that will change the content. It first selects the tabs container element on the page using the query selector method and stores it in the tabs container variable. Next, it selects all the tab toggler elements the links that activate each tab within the tabs container using the query selector all method and stores them in the tab toggler's variable. It then adds a click event listener to each tab toggler using the for each method. For each toggler, the event listener will perform the following actions when the toggler is clicked. Prevent the default behavior of the click event, which is to follow the link's href attribute and navigate to a new page. Get the href attribute of the click toggler, which contains the ID of the tab to be displayed. Select the tab contents container element on the page using the query selector method and store it in the tab contents variable. Loop through all the child elements tabs of the tab contents container and do the following for each one. Remove certain CSS classes from the corresponding toggler element, which are responsible for displaying the border and background styles for the currently active tab. Remove a hidden class from the tab contents element, which will display its content on the page. If the current tab's ID does not match the ID of the tab to be displayed, add the hidden class to its contents element, which will hide its content on the page.
I will create a database to store data for the project. Here I create five tables including customer, mail config, process and template. Okay, the database creation is done. Now I will write the data functions. First, I will create a controller for mail config. Here I will implement the function of adding email config. Our target table will be mail config. I will create a route and link to the newly created controller. In the form action, I will attach the path corresponding to the route. There's an error here, maybe I'm missing the CSR ref at the form. Okay, to validate the input data, I will create a request validate mail config. Here there will be name inputs such as mail server, gate, email, password. Here I will let require, and max length is 255 characters. For email I use Laravel's validate email. To display the validation error to the screen, I use Laravel set error. You can do it like video.
OK an error was displayed when I intentionally left the input empty. I will do insert with Laravel's query builder. Creating a mail config, I will write a query like in the video. The code is updating or inserting a record into the mail config table in the database. The table name is specified using the table method of the DB class. The update or insert method is used to either update an existing record or insert a new one. It takes two arguments. An associative array specifying the columns to be updated or inserted. In this case, the array is ID equals 1, which means that the record with an ID value of 1 will be updated or inserted. The second argument is an array of values to be updated or inserted. In this case, it is request accept token, which means all the data from request will be inserted or updated except the token field. Overall, this code is updating or inserting a record into the mail config table with the values from the request object, except for the token field. Okay. The mail config data has been inserted. Now I will get the data from the mail config table and pass it to the view for the display job. I will create an index controller for dumping data to the home page. At the route, I will also change the path. Here I will query the mail data table information to enter in the input cells. The first line of code retrieves the first row from the mail config table in the database using the first method of the DB class. This method retrieves only one row from the table, so it assumes that the table has at least one row. The result is stored in the mail config variable. The second line of code returns a view called index and passes the mail config variable as a parameter to the view. In Laravel, views are used to generate HTML content that is displayed in the user's web browser. The return view function is used to load a specific view file and pass data to it. In this case, the data is the mail config variable, which will be available in the index view file as the mail config variable. Therefore, this code retrieves the first row of data from the mail config table and passes it to the index view file. The view file can then use the mail config variable to display or manipulate the retrieved data as needed. Okay, now that our view has a mail config variable, I will put the value in the input value. The code is setting the value of an HTML input element to the value of a property called mail server of an object called mail config. The object mail config is likely an instance of a class that holds configuration settings related to email for the application. So, the rendered HTML output would display the value of the mail server property of the mail config object and the value attribute of the input element. I will do the same with the templates and customers tables.
Add customers, I will display a list of added customers. To get the list, instead of query first, I will query get and use loop to iterate data and view. The code uses a for each loop to iterate through the array of customer objects stored in the customer's variable. For each customer object in the array, it creates an HTML table row TR with a light background color and a border. If the page is in a dark mode, it will have a different background color and border. Inside the table row, it creates two table data cells TD to display the customer's email address and name respectively. The values of these fields are obtained by accessing the properties customer email and customer name of each customer object. Finally, the in for each directive is used to close the for each loop. This line starts a for each loop that will iterate over the array of customers. This line creates an option element for each customer in the customer's array. The value attribute is set to the customer's email address customer customer email, and the text content of the option element is set to the customer's name customer customer name followed by their email address. This line ends the for each loop. Okay, now we will do the most important thing that is sending mail with the queue. I will create a job with the command PHP Martis and make job send email. This code snippet takes the selected emails from the form and stores them in a database table for further processing. Then it dispatches a job to send emails to the selected email addresses and finally returns the user back to the form. This line initializes an empty array called process data. This line starts a for each loop that iterates over the array of selected email addresses request list email. Key is not used in this loop and value is the email address. This line creates an associative array with two key value pairs, email and status. The email key is assigned the value of value, which is the email address, and the status key is assigned a default value of zero. This array is then added to the process data array. This line inserts the process data array into the process database table using Laravel's query builder.
This line dispatches a job called Send Email to Laravel's Q system. This job will handle sending emails to the selected email addresses. This line redirects the user back to the previous page. This line retrieves all rows from the process database table where the status column is zero, indicating that the email has not yet been sent. The results are stored in Get Mail Sends as a collection. This line retrieves the first row from the mail config table, which contains email configuration settings. This line retrieves the first row from the template table, which contains the email template to be used for the email message. This line starts a try block and loops through each email in get mail sense. This block of code creates a new Swift message object with the email title from get email template title, sets the from address to get email config email, sets the to address to the email address from get mail send email, sets the message body to the content from get email template content, creates a new Swift SMTP transport object with the email server, port and encryption settings from get email config, sets the SMTP username and password, and creates a new Swift mailer object with the transport settings. Finally, it sends the message and stores the result in result. If the email was successfully sent, this block of code updates the corresponding row in the process table with a status of 1 indicating that the email was sent successfully and the current timestamp is the send time. This block of code catches any exceptions thrown during the try block, logs the exception using Laravel's info function, and updates all rows in the process table with a status of 0 indicating that the email failed to send to have a status of 2. This code snippet retrieves emails from the database table process that have a status of zero indicating that they have not been sent yet, and then sends them using the email configuration settings stored in the mail config and template tables. It also updates the status of each email in the process table to indicate whether it was successfully sent or not.
Maybe I'm missing the Mailer Swift library. I'll install it. OK mail has been sent successfully. Now I want to change some operation. I will change the queue setting from sync to database. To make it work, I will create an extra jobs table and run migrate. Okay. Some more tables have been created. I will proceed to test the email sending feature again. An important note, when you edit anything at the send mail job, you must restart with the command PHP Martisan Q restart for the changes to be applied. Okay, the application has been completed. Thank you for watching the video until now.
and looking forward to contributing to your knowledge with basic and detailed video tutorials. Thank you, goodbye.